The Titan submarine from Ocean Gate began its journey from the city of St. John Port in Canada. The location where it had to dive into the ocean was 700 kilometers away from St. John in the North Atlantic Ocean. At this point, the cold water where the Titanic shipwreck is located. The journey started on Saturday, June 17, 2023. And according to the plan, the next day, Sunday, at 4 o'clock in the morning, the Titan should have been released into the water. It's important to note that an error was discovered in the Titan before the dive, but despite knowing about it, the decision was made to release it into the ocean. What was this error, and why was this risk taken even after knowing about it? In this journey, there were a total of five people. One of them was Hamish Harding, the founder of Action Aviation, who had previously traveled to space with Jeff Bezos. In the second place was Stockton Rush, the CEO of Ocean Gate, an American company that provides submersibles for ocean tourism. The third person was Paul Henry, a 77-year-old expert in shipwrecks who had previously visited the Titanic and had extensive knowledge about its shattered parts. Finally, there was Pakistani businessman Tikwan Shahzada Dawood, accompanied by his son Suleiman Dawood, who were also part of the submarine expedition. On June 17th, before diving, Hamish Harding posted on the internet about the delay in their dive due to the very cold weather. He mentioned that they would wait until the next morning when the weather would be better for a short period of time and they would dive then. These five individuals were driven by their interest in seeing the wreckage of the Titanic. Since it sank in 1912, there had been many challenges in locating it in the following years, primarily due to the harsh conditions of the Atlantic Ocean, making the search far from easy. In 1985, the wreckage of the RMS Titanic was discovered on the ocean floor. The Titanic left many unanswered questions that needed to be explored. Numerous expeditions were organized, involving experts, researchers, and companies to study the shipwreck. Filmmaker James Cameron from Canada extensively studied the Titanic wreck in 1995 and later released the famous Titanic movie in 1997. The movie brought attention to the Titanic story and attracted tourists who wanted to visit the site of the shipwreck, not just for research purposes. It is believed that exploring the depths of the sea is even more challenging than going to space. The main reason for this is the immense water pressure. The Titanic shipwreck is located 4,000 meters deep, which is equivalent to 4 kilometers. To give you an idea, the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building on Earth, would fit underwater more than five times within the depth of the Titanic wreck. At this depth, the water pressure reaches 5,800 pounds per square inch. Now, if you consider the surface area of a submarine, you can imagine the tremendous pressure it has to withstand. On Sunday, June 18th, 2023, at 12 p.m., the marine journey began. Typically, it takes around two hours to reach the Titanic, but after one hour and 45 minutes, the mothership called Polar Prince, which was waiting above the sea, lost connection with the expected arrival time at the Titanic. It indicated that the submarine was very close to it. At the depths of the ocean where the Titanic rests, sunlight cannot reach, and it is always dark. It's normal for wireless signals to break at this depth, so this issue wasn't initially taken seriously. The entire trip was planned for seven hours, from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m., with the expectation to return. But when 7 p.m. came and there was still no connection with the Titan and it hadn't returned, the crew on the mothership started to worry. The Canadian research vessel, Polar Prince, initiated a search for the Titan, and at 9.40 p.m., they contacted the U.S. Coast Guard and requested assistance. The following day, Monday, both U.S. and Canadian ships and helicopters launched a search operation in the area. They not only searched on the ocean's surface, but also used sonar scanning to explore beneath the water. Commercial vessels in the area were instructed to report any information. The research continued for the next two days, but there was no sign of the Titan. However, 
hope was rekindled once again. On Wednesday, June 21st, at 6 o'clock in the morning, the research team heard voices coming from the depths of the ocean, which were detected by the underwater radars. Immediately, remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, were sent in the direction of the sound. But at that time, there was still no news about the Titan. The fear of losing the Titan forever was growing because the submarine had enough oxygen for 96 hours, which is equivalent to four days, and three days had already passed. However, the US, Canadian, and French search teams did not lose hope. On Thursday, June 22nd at 12 p.m., the ROVs were sent near the Titanic wreckage, and upon reaching there, they witnessed a heart-wrenching scene. At 3.48 p.m., the ROVs near the Titanic wreckage spotted the tail of the Titan, located 1,600 feet away from the Titanic itself. The Titan, which was sent to explore the Titanic wreckage, had now become the focus of attention worldwide due to its own wreckage. This indicates that the submarine could not withstand the water pressure and imploded at the ocean's depths. This news spread worldwide, raising questions about the safety measures of OceanGate. The CEO of OceanGate, Stockton Rush, who also lost his life in this incident, had mentioned in 2021 that while creating the Titan, he broke some rules. Instead of using steel, he opted for aviation-grade carbon fiber as he wanted to bring new innovations to the industry. Before its initial launch, the Titan underwent testing for pressure ranging from 5,000 to 10,000 PSI, which it successfully passed. However, experts believe that in the ocean, there are various types of forces at play, including not only pressure, but also the speed of water caused by waves. Additionally, due to the darkness, there is a possibility of the submarine being struck by a large rock or a massive ocean creature. Regardless of the specific cause, one major factor was the use of carbon fiber in the construction of the Titan. The second reason was the presence of pre-existing cracks on its body. In 2019, businessman Carl Sterley went on a journey to the ocean in the Titan submarine with the CEO of OceanGate overseeing the operation. Carl mentioned that during their descent into deeper waters, they heard cracking sounds coming from the Titan's body. At the time, they didn't pay much attention to these sounds as the CEO, who had designed the submarine himself, had full confidence in its capabilities. However, after the incident, Carl told CNN that these cracking sounds were a clear indication that the Titan's body couldn't withstand the water pressure. If what he said is true, it suggests that the presence of cracks in the submarine's body was already a known issue. In 2018, an executive from OceanGate raised concerns about the use of fiber body materials in the Titan, stating that the true capabilities of this material would only be known when the submarine exploded. Unfortunately, something similar to that happened. The experts explained that the explosion at the depth where the Titan imploded occurred within a mere 0.3 seconds. Hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications. We will see you on our next one.